premium right here with Aristotle Investment. Poppy Steve, you and me got with the two for Calvary. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, B Glow, and I'm right here with my boy Aristotle. I get it. He about to teach me about these dividends and saving money. It's your boy DC on Fly, man. I'm here with my boy Aristotle. Shout out to Aristotle. I took his class. Man, this, this dude is the truth, dog. He just put me on game on like. Investments, dividends, stock market. I sit around with a bunch of my friends and we talk about stocks all day now. Man, I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Stupid knowledge, you did. I've learned so much. Aristotle has put my trading level on top. I done learned so much about stock trading, options in particular. It's really changed my whole life and concept about money and investing. This dude taking, taking people off the corner, man. I can honestly just say that like before Aristotle, dude, I was trading off of Impulse. A um, little bit of stuff I learned off of YouTube. But this package, it's the real deal. It'll get you trading off of real facts. You'll be able to back check and you'll be able to know what you're doing, not just jump in because you think it's right. I really should go check out the campaign. We really got something going on. Y'all know me, I'm trying to get my 100 M's any kind of way I can. Yeah. This is Aristotle Investments and welcome to Stock Sundays where I go over a recap of last week's top news you may have missed, option trade recaps and strategies I take, important data and earnings to look forward to, a watch list for next week, and if you stay to the end I do a live Q&A and $200 cash app giveaway $50 to 4 people. Tap in. What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Aristotle, full throttle, all right with the RAR. All right, we back, we back, we back. All right, so last Stock Sundays I'm pretty sure it went well. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get right into it. First of all, before we start, where are you guys from? I need everybody to comment where they're from. So y'all know where I'm at. I'm in the man cave. You see right behind me, everything is blurred out. But we got the Honey Drip Network show, Big Dreams. And we got the Jellyfish, Crocodile. We got it all. We even got that helmet right there, that football helmet. Like right there that a dude bought for me. I got it from Houston. Told him I would. Put it right there. All right, let's see what we get. We got Toronto. We got South Carolina, Idaho, Georgia, L.A., Brooklyn, Philly, Maryland, Atlanta, Indy, New York, V.A., F.L., Maryland, Miami, Connecticut, Flint, Virginia, all of that. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. So we're going to make this one nice, short, and sweet. Back with another Sunday watch list. So let's get right into it. So you guys already know the drill. Y'all know the game. What we're going to do is we're going to go over a recap of last week's news, a recap of trades I took, biggest movers and losers, crypto news, data and important news to look forward to, earnings, Sunday watch list. All right. So news recap. Let's get right into it. All right. First, let me change this one. Change this camera real quick. There we go. So news recap. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So Rivian just said Rivian owners will be able to use 12,000 Tesla superchargers with adapters in U.S. and Canada as early as spring of 2024. Rivian said it will make Tesla style charging ports standard on its vehicle on his vehicles stating from 2025. Rivian also said it will adapt Tesla's charging standard. All right. So we're looking at this Rivian stock. Uh, I, I told people whom this might be one to look forward to. I, I noticed they were on the dip and we will go look at Rivian once we start charting stocks. But Rivian does look like a good one. Looks like one of the best ones that will take charge in the EV space as far as Ford, GM, Tesla and Rivian, like I say, and they're all under Tesla. So te so I would say Tesla is becoming the Bitcoin of EV, as we can see in we would say uh, Ethereum could possibly be, honestly, in the EV space, it's Ford right now. And then I would say GM and Ford are kind of the Ethereums and everything else is kind of beneath it, right? So OpenAI is considering launching a marketplace in which customers could sell AI models they customize from their own needs to other businesses, the information, right? So basically... I'm noticing all the unique business models coming out when it comes to online usage. It's like you can create a unique business business model by streamlining and knowing what the people want. So as you can see, and if you don't know, Microsoft owns OpenAI. So the thing I like about OpenAI is, you know, 
they're coming out and they're trying to streamline different businesses for the customers. So I always said it, um, the people who can create the apps the fastest, the people who can create the most efficient ways of making money the fastest will will win. All right. Make sure you guys like. All right. I need everybody to start liking it. All right. That's all I ask for. I will give you guys all of the unique information. Just please give me a thumbs up. That would mean a lot to me. All right. Warner Bros. May license HBO original series to Netflix. So like I said in the prior Stock Sundays, and this is episode 10, I've been saying for the longest, hey, Warner Bros., well, Netflix specifically, is something I missed out on. Wasn't expecting them to come back from it. But because, uh, you know, streaming is so much competition. I just wasn't expecting them to. I thought they peaked. I did. I thought Netflix peaked, but they showed me once. But the thing is, it was common sense that they did not peak because they never reached the level of subscribers. Put it like this. They knew everybody was password sharing. So they knew by cracking down on that one move, it would boost their profits. And, you know, I got to hand it to them. Netflix, you're killing it. And now uh, people are on some, if you can't beat them, join them type thing. You know, people are going right back to Netflix. Tried to do it themselves. Didn't have the proper business model. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, Ford. Ford is preparing for another round of layoffs for U.S. salary workers. Ford have been laying off people since I was in elementary school. I remember they closed down the uh, the Ford factory in Atlanta, and people went crazy. Like you know, so let's not act like all these layoffs are brand new. Um, this thing has been going on for the last two decades, in my honest opinion. Uh, who remember? And then I think they closed down their factory in Detroit, but I'm not sure. I know they started in Detroit, so it would be weird if they did it. But I think it was Ohio. It was a lot of plants getting closed down and you know because they got ai the the more they're able to make these robots fix up cars and do all the things they wanted to do the uh less they're going to need people and that's kind of common sense we're kind of beating a dead horse here but uh whenever companies lay off employees what happens the stock goes up now why does the stock go up because they make more profits you get what i'm saying so you got to think, depending on how many employees they lay off, let's just say the average employee is, uh, you know, 40000 and they lay off 5000 So let's see how much they say annually. So I'm going to do it in my calculator real quick. 40000 times 5000 That's $200 million they'll save. So what could Ford use that $200 million? So by laying off just 5000 employees, they will save two hundred million annually, correct? And that's over a long period of time. So you know, if you're a stock investor, that's good news. If you're a humanitarian, that is bad news. So it's all about how you look at it and the perspective you have on life. All right. So I just want you guys to know that money doesn't really have uh, um, feelings. If you get in your feelings when it comes to money, you'll lose out. All right. So um, Tesla, so it was a short trading week. So I went three out of four trades last week. Um, this one was the biggest one. It went 100%. I've been consistently, 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 at least hitting one 100% play per week. Uh, I've been on a nice streak this year, probably for the last like six months, honestly. I'm on one of the most legendary option streaks ever, in my opinion. So, you know, it is what it is. So let's talk about it. So let's talk about why I got in these Tesla puts. Tesla 265 puts, 623. This was June 21st, 2003. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to trading view. So let me back out of here real quick. So we're going to go to trading view. Let's get back into it. So we're gonna to go to Tesla 621. I wanna show you guys exactly 
why I would buy puts at this time frame. So I'm going to go to the five minute chart. And we're going to go to the one that says 621. This should be it right here. Boom. So let's talk about why I got in um, Tesla puts. So where did I get in Tesla puts? I'll show you. So for one, it was this pre-market low right here. So let's make that white. So I signal it in the chat in the high risk channel right here. So we go to the actual play. We'll talk about it right here is where I signaled it 265 puts at 950. So you'll see my entry here. So let's look at it 950 this candle right here. Now if we scroll all the way down. You'll see the timestamps down here. You see that 950 right here. So we go all the way up. It'll be this candle. So I got in Tesla right here at 950 and you know, I told people, you know, hey, this is technically high risk, but you know, we're going to take the risk. So once it retested, once it broke down, retested right here, I would got in some puts right here and then this thing just fell. Shoo, shoo. And that's how we got 95%, right? So because, so we got in right here and then we took profits right here. So if I had to show it, on the screen, we got in right here and took profits down here, right? So those were so this was our entry and this would be our exit right there, right? So that's the reason I got in, broke below pre-market low uh, right here. Really, it was this candle that made me get in. And then I got in, signaled it to the group, and this thing just kept falling down. And should I have stayed in? Yes. I was kind of mad I didn't stay in. Um, I could have bought this pullback on the 8 if I was, you know, smart and rolled the 8 down. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And sometimes it's important to go back to your trades and say, hey, you know, even though I made 95%, I ain't tripping. But, you know, sometimes it's good to go back and say, maybe I should have, uh, you know, got some puts back in here, rolled this 8 down. You know, you just need to go back and check your old trades. So let's talk about the one trade I lost. And I'll show you guys on a PowerPoint real quick. So let's get into that. So let's talk about, well, we'll look at one more trade I won. So this would be the SPX puts. So this was on the same day. So I only had, and sometimes all you need is one good trading day. But I made about uh, only 6000 last week. Nothing too major as far as day trading. It wasn't really, uh, I had a lot of busy work. But I, only, but I managed to make 6000 And a bulk of it came from this day when I was live trading. So the one day I did live trade, we went crazy. Three for three on live trading. Um... And I'll show you this play I did. It was on SPY, the same day SPY put. So 620, uh, whatever number you want to call it. It was 621. Let's go back to it. So let's look at SPY and let's go in the reason why I got in SPY. And this was on live trading, by the way. So this was 621. It would be this one. Oh, yep. Here we go. So uh, this is the one I actually got to go and edit after this. But this was one of my favorite trades I got in because I made a lot of money. So I believe it went something like this. So basically... This was the trend line on the five minute chart, correct? If I'm not mistaken, I forgot how I got in this thing. I just know this thing broke trend line. When it broke trend line, I basically bought the pullback here and we got in puts. Now, granted, people were scared as shit. I'll show you where we got in. 
So we got in puts this candle. We got in right here, right? And as you can see, I draw boxes where my entries are. So I told people this red line is my stop loss. So people were panicking when we was right here. It was like, man, Aristotle, I've been in this trade 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Like by the 30 minute mark, they were panicking right here. And I said, look, guys, I'm not exiting. I told you guys my stop loss. So, you know, as a leader, sometimes you got to lead your people down the right path. So I literally told them this red line is our stop loss. Um, and we, we got in right here. So we got in puts right here, but it was looking bad right here. And, you know, but luckily this candle right here, this candle and this candle saved the day. And we end up profiting like 40 percent. So we got in right here. We were profiting every time it got down here, but it started to uh, kind of chop a little bit and then boom, it fell. And, you know, that's why stop losses are important. I, I marked our stop loss. We followed it and check that out. Our stop loss is pretty good because it's still rejected from there a few times. So as you can see right here, we we bring that red line all the way across. So that's why it's important to have a mentor because I did this live. And I'll post it, by the way. I'll post the uh, the clip um, on my reels on my Instagram. I might even post it on uh, here on YouTube shorts, too. But, yes, uh, I even drew it prior to us even uh, trading. I forgot exactly what line I drew. But all I know is it was a nice trend line. Let me go go back and look, though. But this was the one we banked on. Uh, put, a, put a me if you was in the chat when we banked on this. If you guys were there. Look, he said, as soon as his signal came in, I went big. Dude, don't miss. He was there. Okay. Somebody said, saw your Facebook ad. Nice. That's what's up. He said, dude came in live, called two bangers and left at 11. Plays no game at all. Appreciate it, bro. And then uh, what else they put? How you get the clouds? They call HD clouds. People know what they are. Yep, people were there. They said, me, he not capping. See that? So people were there. So this isn't something I'm just making up for Stock Sundays. And for one, I would never do that. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we're in a uh, an exposed culture. So I don't want to be the one getting exposed for being a fake. Uh, so everything I say on here, you can fact check. You can go look at it. You can do whatever you want to do. I challenge those to do that because I know we're in a, a hating, exposed culture these days. So I make sure I go back and show proof. And then I have people who can vouch. People saying me, they were there. This person was there. He was there. Whoever he was, they were there. Okay, people. So we don't play. They were there. So anyway, let's get let's get right back into it. Y'all see how I'm filming and producing my own show? This is dope, though. I like this. So we're going to go back to the PowerPoint. I'm going to present this bad boy. Get back into it. So this was one of my favorite days. And, you know, hey, this is a good weekly income, in my opinion. A 6000 off day trading. And then this is my one loss. This is the only loss I took. So I went three for four. Um, and the only reason I took this loss, cause I thought, you know, Intel and MU were, were, do, were going to do good. Uh, shout out to Intel, you a bitch. Um, you know, you shouldn't have did this and I'm going to show you what Intel did. Let me get, let me back out real quick. I'm going to show you exactly what Intel did. So let's get back into it real quick. So let's look at Intel. Oh, by the way, my daughter taught me something today. Let me tell you what my daughter taught me. She made him a, she was banging on my keyboard, right? Um, let me get all these BWAP things off and stuff. But anyway, she was banging on my keyboard, right? And she did this. She pretty much pressed the uh one H by accident. So if you type one H, it'll go to the one hour chart. If you type uh 4h it'll go to the four hour chart if you type in 1d it'll go to the daily chart so for those that's a new trading view trick i just learned today while researching stocks literally today and my daughter kept beating on my uh, ipad and i i discovered it through my daughter 
funny, right? Because, you know, I've been using TradingView since 2017. So all these new updates, well, 2016. So all of these new updates are kind of like it is what it is. But let me explain this. So basically, Intel broke with some rising volume here, right? So it broke these highs that it was trying to, uh, these recent highs, right? So I'm like, cool. So I tried to buy the, the retest, just like MU. If we go to MU, I took the same setup and it worked. See that? I bought the retest when it broke here, came back down. So I was like, you know what? This is the same setup as MU and they're kind of in the same field. So why not? So, and I bought this and it went crazy last stop Sunday. So, you know, I'm like, fuck it. Intel. So, you know, my rationale always be cool. So that's another thing, folks. If you went in with good intentions, don't be mad that you lost. I went in with good intentions, um, but it broke below and it hit my stop loss. But it's now it's a bullish engulfing off the 21 EMA. And it still hasn't technically, you know, closed two days prior, you know, below this. So, so you know, Intel could come back. I wouldn't be surprised if it does. And we'll get more into the watch list. But this is my only loss. And it was a bad loss. It was 60%. So after that beautiful day where I made like 4,600, you know, they, I, but it was a swing. So I only lost like $600, but it's the principle. I just don't like losing. Y'all know how this shit go. But yeah, the reason why I got in this, cause it was, I was trying to do the same setup as uh MU and I lost. It is what it is. You just got to move on folks. You're not going to win them all, but you know, you can only win the ones you take so that's another thing folks that's why i just take the best setups and to be honest it works it works for me so my my strategy works honey drip works you feel me like you know let's get right into it so as usual let me do this let me let me bring y'all back into it So, as usual, click the link in the description for $10 off weekly trial, $35, but now it's for $25 for the first 100 people. We sell out every stock Sunday. So, if you're interested in joining Honey Drip, it's a thousand of you. So, you might want to hurry up because it's a thousand viewers on this live, and usually they sell out quick. Um, baby, can you add the link in the description? So, um, link in the description. She'll add it real quick for the $25 trial. Do you know where to get that code from? It's in the uh, free part of the um, Discord. But, yeah, Stock Sundays, baby. Make sure you guys – I'll post a link in the chat pretty soon. She will. So, be looking out for that. And I'll let you guys – and she'll give me the okay when she posted it. So, now we're on to the biggest movers and losers of last week. Doesn't it look like it's a stain right here? Check that out. We got like a, a a syrup stain on the back of the thing. That's for the losers, right? So biggest movers: Merck, Amazon, CVS, um, Meta, ABT, PM, and we talked about ABT. By the way, we talked about ABT last sun like last stock Sundays. Did we talk about CVS? We'll go and look at all of these when we start charting. And uh, biggest losers, uh, things I don't care about in Intel, you know, you're a B word. AMD, I'm looking to buy them. That's another one I was looking at. Let me look at my notes too. Because AMD, I'm looking to get into AMD pretty soon. Especially if they come back down one more tick. It's a wrap. Um, I love AMD and maybe a few banks. I'm not really a fan of banks, but we shall see. Data and important news. Not much coming out. No major news. Monday, I'll be trading. Um, Tuesday, consumer confidence, durable goods, home sales. And then we got, you know, like I said, I'm not really the data guy. I don't really get into all of this because uh, I like to wait today. Me personally, I'm a day trader and a swinger. So I like to buy low, sell high. I like to uh, not really get too much into these, even though I do pay attention to it all the time. It does help with the data and all of that. But like I said, I like to wait till they actually get done talking and then trade. Or I don't like to place trades whenever these things are going on, unless I'm in swings, stuff like that. So that's just me personally. I'm just giving you guys some advice. But here's the major thing coming out for this week. 
and we'll post more updates in the chat for those who want to keep up with these we keep up with these for you so during the days we'll be like hey this what's going on don't trade at this time and here goes the uh, actual uh this uh this right here folks here goes the link for the trial so click that and you guys will be good to go um that it'll be in the uh chat so she'll just keep posting that link all right and then earnings uh nike on thursday is the one i'll be watching for the most i mean that signal is so iconic i'm talking about i can look at a million of these and this is all i see I can't see anything else. Rite Aid will be going bankrupt. Um, who else will be going bankrupt out of this list? Rite Aid for sure. I'm not even, I don't even see how they're still on the uh, stock market. Blackberry, uh, another bankrupt stock. Um, and this is just the cycle of life, folks. Uh, you know, nothing lasts forever. But, you know, it depends on how your company is stationed. You got to make your company that's why i say long term is about looking at those people who don't fucking play and i only see a few of these on this list who don't play nike um general mills maybe micron and the rest i would have to look at their balance sheet so here's another thing too for oh constellation brands i know they they do beer they're the people for those who drink corona uh, these guys create Corona beers, which I think is so fucking nasty. When I was in the military, uh, those guys drink the shit out of some beer, and it was nasty to me. Beer tastes like spit, um, and, you know, I don't care if you call me less of a man for not wanting to drink beer, but it is nasty, and I just want to let all of you beer drinkers know that it is nasty, and Aristotle does not approve, all right? So let's get right into it. Let's talk about one of my favorite setups. Let's go to Tesla, and I'm gonna new this, I'm gonna use this new thing my daughter taught me. Shout out to Zania. By the way, I'm so in love with my daughter. So I'm gonna type 4H, and now we're gonna go to the four hours. So somebody comment this. What pattern do you see? Somebody comment the pattern. All right. Somebody comment what pattern they see up top here. Let's see who gets it right. Who sees what I see? Let's see who be paying attention. Let's see who went honey drip. Let's see who really getting to it. What what pattern do I see right here? Uh-oh. We got it. Some people got it. Okay. Who, who said it first, though? Let's see. Who said it first? This person right here, Ernesto Valdez. But we got some people who got it right. There we go. Y'all see that head and shoulders? So, uh... Yeah, we need to watch for that. Everybody's saying the head and shoulders. So if you don't know what a head and shoulders pattern is, let's talk about it. So this is on a four-hour chart on uh, Tesla. So let's go in and let's talk about this head and shoulders play real quick. Let's go to Google. Let's see, Google. So for those who don't know what a head and shoulders pattern is, this would be one like this, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, all right? And this would be one too, shoulder, head, right shoulder. So basically you're looking for a shoulder, head, right shoulder, a peak in the middle pretty much. So you can look at it as some Disney castles, you know how the Disney castle looks. So this, this is the head and shoulders. So on a four hour chart, I see that, a peak, a head, and a shoulder. Now. Let's talk about where this thing could go. So if Tesla breaks below this red this red line, let's make it a solid line. Let's make it go all the way across. So if Tesla gets below 247.3, let's just say that, we're good to go. And I can even, uh, let's draw the head real quick. All right, and what color do I want this? Let me make this yellow. All right, so we got us a, a head and shoulders right here. Now, where could this thing go? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the approximate target if Tesla does come down. 
we take the head, apply it to the breakdown. Oops. So we take the top of the head to the to the uh, neckline, and then we take that and apply it to the breakdown. And it is saying Tesla could drop to two sixteen. That's what it's saying. Uh, at least, well, two seventeen. Let's say that two seventeen. Yep. So Tesla could come down to two seventeen according to the charts. Now I know what you guys are saying, Aristotle. What the fuck did you just do? I'm going to tell you. Let's go to uh, Spy Four Hour, and I'll show you an example of of a head and shoulders of a long time ago. Um, actually, QQQ would be a better one. So here we go right here, a head and shoulders play. Let's take these clouds off real quick. You see that? Head, shoulder, I mean my fault, shoulder, head, right shoulder, right? So let's take this same line, you see that? And we apply it to the breakdown. So we take the head and the neckline, right? And then this is a long time ago on QQQ, so this was August. 2022 and then boom check that out you see how it literally went right here so that's where it's saying tesla could go if it drops to about 217 ish if it gets below this level oops so yep 217 if it gets below 247.3 so I guess you could say 247, below 247.3, 247, it can get to about 217. It could be, you know, it could be bad, and it could possibly get here. If it gets here, this is a good buy. We're going to see, though. It might just be profit taking, though, folks. So be careful just shorting. You know, um, I won't say be careful shorting, but it could be profit taking. That's all it is. Now, let's go to another stock I like, AMD. There's another setup I like. Somebody said, what tool is that? AMD. So AMD, I'm looking for it to come right here to 102, 103 mark. So AMD coming down to this box area right here, which is the 200 MA on the four hour and everything. We just need one more tick down. Uh, and that would be a retest of this. If AMD comes here, I would recommend uh, me personally. I'm going to average into some more leaps, uh, maybe a long, a little outdated swing. I'm going to uh, put in some money, you know, some medium money and swing it from this level right here to the 103. So those are my favorite two setups. AMD coming down and we buying a dip here in the 103, 102, 101 mark, this little box area. This is why I draw a box because it could, you know, you don't, this is another thing, folks. You want to draw a box where the zone you want to buy because sometimes it'll get in there and it won't technically get to your level, but if it gets here, I buy. And if it gets down here, you know. So this is why I draw boxes whenever you see me uh, draw levels because this is the zone I like to buy in, if that makes sense. Let's see how many people watching. 1,200 people watching. Can I get some more thumbs up, folks? This is so amazing. 1,200 people watching. All right. This is dope. So, yeah, I like AMD here at this 103 area, and I'm looking at Tesla to drop some more, you know, if it would be so kind. And if Tesla drops some more and they give you guys one more chance to buy, even at this 208 level, if Tesla somehow by any chance just have like a terrible ass day and it comes down here, um, I'll buy up. But I, I will be buying puts if it gets below this level. And if you want to see my exact entry, join my chat. And you already know all I'm going to do is post it in one of these respectful channels. I already called a Tesla put once. So what? And it went 90 percent. And what did I say? I'm back. And yeah. Oh, by the way, we caught a spy put here too uh, at the end. At the very end, I said the 437 rejection. And that motherfucker rejected right there. As you can see, it rejected right where I told him it'll reject. And they like, oh man, you the goat, you the goat, yada, yada, yada. 
right? So like I said, uh, click that link. Let's put that link in there again, baby. And then, uh, yeah. So let's talk about some more stocks I like. I looked at Tesla. Let me look at my notes real quick on my phone because I like to write them in my phone. So I looked at Tesla Cat. So let's look at the next one I like, which is Cat. I like to organize it a little bit more. So Cat broke out of this beautiful A, uh, God damn, what is this called? Uh, Fallen Wedge, right? Now, Fallen Wedges have been fucking me all year. And then the one I don't take goes. So Cat went, but the first pullback on the Fallen Wedge is always a good buy. So I noticed that too, and I'll show you guys proof and data behind that to back up my statement. But now, Cat has now pulled back, and this might be a good buy. Um, even if it comes down some more, I still think even right here is a good buy. So Cat is right here by the 21 EMA of that yellow line right there, and I kind of like Cat. Uh, if Cat gets above. 236 so let's do a test cat plus 236 for the 240 calls all right there goes one i like it Cat plus 236 for the 240 calls. And I think it this would be a good pullback. Now, why am I saying this? Because uh, I've been studying this pattern for a long time. And this, this first pullback after a nice breakout always does pretty good from history. So just, you know, another setup. I, I've known so many setups in my day. They call me Setup King, you know. This is what I do. Another one I was looking at would be... Uh, What's it called? X. I'm just stuck in on my X. Okay. So um, we're going to have to go and look at their data first before we make a um, move on them. But X. I like this bull flag here. Y'all see that? So if X breaks this bull flag here at the rejection from the 200 MA, let's take off these as you if you notice i always keep the 200 ma up so it's saying this is the flagpole it's saying if x breaks out of this bull flag it could at least come here now let's go see if they make the profits to make this thing at least come here so it's saying x could at least come to this line which makes sense at least to this area right that's where it's saying it's saying x is coming back up here that's what it's saying based on technicals now let's go see if these guys are correct i won't say they are correct let's just see if x has some some good uh profits because you don't want to like invest into some shit that's just trash my fault uh financials so uh 2022 was their first profitable year in a long time trailing 12 months they're still down but let's see quarterly quarterly positive positive three positive quarters in a row um and they got quarter over quarter growth for the last three quarters they are a steel company um we might try this if they break out, fuck it. You know, it's a cheap. If for those who like trying, who want a, a good risk for small accounts, this might be one. I like it. This little bull flag here. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Choppy. But seems to hold this weight, hold this area here. Okay, 
So that's good news. Hold up. Let me. Boom. My fault. So sometimes you got to zoom out and go see if you see some good news. So we got us a little trend here going with X. That's why sometimes it's important to zoom out. So maybe this thing could blow the top off. It's in a nice uptrend. 52-week high would be 40s, 38. And the last time it was there was 2022 when it boomed during this time. So X would be all right. Let me see if I like another one. Those will be my top four. Now, let's go look at SPY. Let's go look at SPY. Those will be my top four. So, let's see what condition SPY is in. Uh, yes, sir. You can see in my eyes. And I'm looking for a cutie pie. We ain't got to make love. All right. So, Huh. I mean, SPY looks like it could keep coming down some more. It broke below the 8 EMA. If we bring up this, um, so if it comes back down here, I would like to buy in this uh, 429, 430 area. Uh, SPY could come. I would like SPY to come back down so stocks like Tesla can come down, stocks like AMD, because, you know, our setups depend on SPY coming down in the first place, so. Um, that would I honestly be a blessing. We should all hope for a pullback so we can catch Tesla again. Uh, QQQ come down a little bit so we can catch you. Tesla, we need it coming down to about right here. Oh, never mind. Look at that. Check that out, folks. Whoa. So that 216, 217 mark was actually right here on Tesla. Check that out. So never mind. It says Tesla is going to retest this. That is perfect, honestly. Holy crap. So it's saying Tesla will retest this part. My fault. I use this peak. That's why it's important to zoom out. So it's pretty much saying if it breaks this this uh head and shoulders, it's coming straight down here to here. That's what it's saying. And you guys saw me draw the uh Y'all saw me draw it. So this is perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That lines right up. We did the measurements and it said Tesla will retest here if it breaks down here. Now, if it does that, uh, deem me a, a legend again on Stock Sundays. I already done did this once, twice, three times, but you know, it is what it is. Let's keep going down though. Amazon. Looks bullish as shit, and we're in leaps, by the way. I'm in Amazon leaps, them things printing. Apple, we're in Apple leaps, them things printing. Meta, we're in Meta leaps, them things printing. Microsoft looks like we got us a nice short play if it breaks this trend. So I was looking at it earlier. If Microsoft breaks this trend right here, I look to short it all the way down to either this 200 May and this uh, trend line here. Not all the way down, but I, I like I like a lot of short plays, you know. Wouldn't be surprised if we turn bullish, but, you know, I'm just a, a person who loves charting. And based on technicals, it looks like we got a pullback. I would like a pullback so we can buy some dips. Because if Microsoft comes down here to this 315 area, then it's, it's an automatic buy again. Um, you know, I would like certain stock just to come back down. You know, just a little bit. AMD, of course, is 102 area. Google could come down to this trend line too. Google riding this trend line, as you can see, this pink line. So I wouldn't be surprised if it retests. You know, I'm just wishful thinking, but I hope we come up. Uh, I want y'all opinion. What y'all think we're going to do up or down this week? What y'all think? Yeah, cat is a tricky play. What y'all think? Somebody said, I've been waiting on the pullback. Me too. I'm waiting on the pullback. That's why I've been day trading lately because I'm waiting on the pullback. But that'll be it, folks. Uh, that'll be it for my stock Sundays. I'm actually flying to Africa 
uh, tomorrow night. So um, that's somebody said down, down. People like down, down, down. Y'all don't got to say it because I'm saying it. If you think up, some people think up. I wouldn't carry the weight because I'm day trading. I'm not in anything right now. Do y'all like Disney? Um, I do. I don't. I wouldn't quit on Disney just yet. Uh, I'm in some long term and swings, so sometimes things take longer than others. But yeah, I do personally. I wouldn't give up on Disney, um, just because it's Disney. Disney literally had the number one movie out right now. Now I'm not saying will that make the stock go up. No, I'm not saying that. But a little downtrend here. And then if it could break this downtrend, then it could possibly do something again. We shall see. But uh, I personally like Disney for a long-term hold. I mean, it's Disney. If Netflix, if Netflix can figure it out, why can't Disney? All right. But make sure you guys subscribe to the chat. If you're not in, uh, we call Hella Plays. Um, last week, I didn't call many plays, but I called a few. And that's another thing, folks. We are a a high probability type chat. So if you're trying to be the person, because some people join option trading chats and they don't realize that it's quality over quantity. If you focus on just a quantity of signals, then you'll lose. But if you're looking for high probability setups that win 90% of the time, because we call a lot of trades, but we don't call... We're not the type to call 20 trades a day. We're the type to call, you know, three per person type thing. But it'll add up to about 10 to 20 a day based on how many we call. But we're not – we don't encourage um, machine gun trading. We encourage sniper trading, if that makes sense. So don't try to trade like a machine gun. You'll lose. Trade like a sniper. Sit back, analyze the plays. You get what I'm saying? And you guys should be good. Make sure you guys uh, join up. Link in the description. I'll add it in the description. Uh, and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Thank you for attending all a thousand of you. I want you to. I just want all of you to understand that that does mean something to me. Every last viewer, every last eye who is watching right now, it means something to me. Um, thank you. Uh, whatever I can do to repay you guys for uh, watching, I try to give you guys free signals. Um, you know, but that's the least I could do for you guys attending like some free money. You know, how about that? Right. God bless you guys. Love all of you um, and continue to watch. I will continue to give you guys the best value, the best free plays, the best charting. All right. See you guys next Sunday.